Hello everyone, grab your pen and paper and let's talk about secondary immune deficiencies. Essentially, in this lecture, we're first going to be giving an overview of what secondary immune deficiencies are, and then we're going to be uh, giving a, deta a detailed example uh, of a disease that's caused by this uh, deficiency, and that, that is AIDS. Also, we're going to get into the mechanism of how it actually works, and with giving examples. First of all, uh, there are diseases that occur secondarily to another cause, like there is a primary cause that is happening, which we are going to be detailing shortly, and then these diseases come in, uh, in, in joint with this. So first of all, the first cause is malnutrition. This is due to the lack of food or an aggressive diet. Second, we've got stress. Now complications in our nervous system can compromise our immune system, which is going to be triggering these, these diseases. Third, the cancer. Essentially, the tumor or and even in the treatment, uh, this is going to be leading to the death of the immune cells and this is going to be make, rendering us more prone to infection. Like Essentially, the way I want to portray it is the fact that these are basically opportunistic diseases that when we have a problem, like in malnutrition, we have a, pro a, a poor supply of food, therefore our immune cells are, not, uh, are exhausted essentially and therefore they're not as functional, therefore the infections are going to be uh, triggered here. Also, stress is the same way. When we are stressed, our immune system is compromised and then the infections can uh, can infect us or they can uh, trigger their, their major complications in this time. Also cancer and treatment is the same. Next we've got autoimmune diseases. I think this is self-explanatory especially if you've watched the rest of the immune autoimmune diseases uh, videos on this channel. Now our immune cells can be exhausted due to the high activity which is also going to be rendering these uh, uh, pathogens uh, able to go and uh, infect. Then we've got bone marrow suppression. Also, this is self-explanatory and infection like AIDS. Now, this is going to be detailed now. Essentially, AIDS uh, is short for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Now, it is a retrovirus that is composed of two major uh, components. First, we've got the nucleocapsid and the envelope. In the nucleocapsid, uh, there contains a genetic material that is two identical copies of RNA and a capsid that is that uh, it, it is composed of uh, the P24 capsid protein, uh, proteases, obviously to degrade proteins, integrases to integrate the cDNA that we're going to be talking about into the host's uh, genome and reverse transcriptase. Now, we mentioned that the genetic material is an RNA and obviously most uh, most genomes and, uh, and genetic material in uh, almost all organisms is, is, uh, is DNA. Therefore, in order to incorporate them into the, their genomes, they have to be switching to uh, complementary DNA and this is what reverse transcriptase main activity is. Now ho uh, hopefully there is going to be a video that is going to be detailing reverse transcriptase soon on this channel. Next it is worth mentioning that reverse transcriptase allows the formation of cDNA as we mentioned from RNA and integrates uh, integrases facilitates the integration of this cDN cDNA into the host cell genome. Next, we've got the envelope. In the envelope, it comprises of obviously the lipid bilayer and glycoproteins, including the GP120 and the GP41, which are essential for the binding of the receptor on the host cell. Now, the GP120 is of particular interest, and we are going to be mentioning that now. Essentially, this GP120 is going to be the it is going to be binding to the receptor that is the CD4 receptor on the T cells, and this is where the infection starts. Essentially, this is how the virus starts. In its activity within the cells of the host. Now, the methods of transmission of AIDS include, uh, but are not limited to, sexual intercourse uh, through the placenta that during delivery, breastfeeding, or blood transfusion. Now, uh, for the most part, it, go, it uh, occurs by sexual um, intercourse. However, the rest are to a very low margin. Now, there are two main types of HIV, HIV-1 and HIV-2, that are more prevalent in different uh, continents. We're not going to get into the demographics of that. And uh, they are detected by the production of antibodies uh, against the uh, B24 proteins. Now, infection of AIDS. Now, we're going to be talking about the mechanism of how AIDS uh, essentially infects. So, uh, it is detailed as follows. First, the virus is going to be infecting the dendritic cells. Recall, the dendritic cells are one of the most prevalent, the most important uh, antigen-presenting cells. So, they're going to be infecting them, and then they are going to be migrating to the lymph nodes. In the lymph nodes, the virus is going to be infecting T cells that are present there, and this is going to be beginning an acute infection, which leads to the sp spread of the virus in the blood, and this is 
this term viremia by the way this is the term viremia essentially whenever we have a virus present inside the blood it is termed viremia not only for aids now after that they're going to be moving to the spleen Continuing on, we've got antibodies and CD8. CD8 are the cytotoxic T cells. So uh, they're going to be working on containing the virus and this could last for a very long time, possibly decades. Now we're going to be focusing on the image that is present underneath my uh, camera at the moment and uh, after we switch it, but after we complete this, uh, these two points. Uh, so basically, uh, when they fight, they're going to be delaying but not getting rid of the virus. Then the loss of T cells the eventual loss of t-cells if i should say will result in the infections caused by opportunistic pathogens and usually leads to death so in summary uh, there is a decrease in the initial number of t-cells when the virus first enters in the body then there's a phase of fighting between our immune system and the virus and eventually this is generally uh, speaking it is going to be staying for a very long time eventually the virus is going to be winning this battle and our immune system is going to dwindle very uh, the, the amount of uh, immune cells are going to be dwindling down very fast after that happens opportunistic pathogens are going to come into play they're going to cause us infections and this is usually going to be leading to death so let's uh, actually go through the image that is present uh, essentially we've got the yellow circles and the blue circles first of all the yellow circles uh, essentially uh, they portray the uh, number of virus uh, numbers of uh, the virus that is present within our body now essentially obviously it's going to be at zero before the infection begins and our immune system the number of t-cells present inside our body is going to be relatively high upon infection the number of the uh, virus is going to be increasing very rapidly this is when our body or t-cells are not capable of responding however just like i mentioned before they're going to be fighting for a very long time this is where this uh, there is a sort of um a fluctuation between the number of the HIV and the T cells and this is going to be uh, going on for a very long time however as you see in the in the right hand corner this is uh, by the way this is called the latency period so uh, essentially there, re there reaches a point where the blue circles are going to be uh, uh, going down very quickly and this is when the number of the viruses is going to be increasing rapidly this is because there are no T cells that are going to be fighting off these viruses therefore these viruses are going to be replicating and increasing the in number now so uh, basically we will have constitutional symptoms that are going to be uh, prevalent and we've got opportunistic diseases this is very natural because we have so many na uh, latent or um, uh, basically opportunistic pathogens that are present within our body even now but since our immune system is rather strong they are kept at bay and only when our immune system is compromised they are going to be attacking so uh, basically opportunistic diseases are going to come up and eventual death is going to be ensuing thank you for watching this has been Ali from Biology.